Tis a time to be merry, so then now Tis a marvelous moment in vain Pay a fifty cent go for admission And help us to open our great exposition to Today you see what a day to believe has been planned And we're a part of it, watching the start of it Stand up and cheer for American freedom The 100 year of American freedom Send them up What a party they're giving Send them up Oh, we're glad to be living Gentlemen, the President of the United States. My countrymen, it has been thought appropriate upon this centennial occasion to bring together in Philadelphia for popular inspection, specimens of our attainment in the industrial and fine arts, and in literature, science, and philosophy, as well as in the great business of agriculture and of commerce, that we may the more thoroughly appreciate the excellences and deficiencies of our achievements and also give emphatic expression our earnest desire to cultivate the friendship of our fellow members of this great family nation. Louder! Louder! Shh! Thunderation, I can't hear. Please. Please. Please what? Are you suggesting, sir, that I continue pretending to hear when I do not? Jesse Rogers, will you be quiet? There's nothing in the Constitution which prohibits the President from opening his mouth good and wide and saying what he has to say. Quiet! Did Daniel Webster sneak out penciled notes when he spoke? Quiet, please. Did Patrick Henry mumble in his beard as he read his immortal words from a paper cuff? They did not. Why, if I were making a speech... My dear sir, you are making a speech. Oh, a Republican, huh? Come, Jesse, let's go home. Children! Come, we're going home. Julia? Yes, sir. Edith? Good, Susie. Follow me now. Now, don't get lost. Come, children. Excuse me. Pardon me. It's after five and dinner isn't half ready. And the Phelps are always on time. 
Deborah, keep that stove hot. It's hotter than you know what. Edith, help Julia with the potatoes. Edith, will you please put away those fashions? After all, this dinner is for your gentleman caller. Oh, but, Mother, look, I found it. I found the dress, the one I've been dreaming about. Isn't it daring? It certainly is. Twenty dollars. Here, beat. Oh, but, Mother, you promised me a new dress for the centennial. You said I... Beat. You know very well that all the pin money I've managed to save is thirty dollars for you and Julia. There'll be enough left over for Julia's dressmaker. Ten dollars? But, Julia, you don't need anything like this. Maybe not, but I would like something like... Like this. Twelve fifty. Now, there's a sensible girl. Why don't you get one like Julia's? Maybe we could get a discount. Mother, I couldn't possibly wear anything but this. I just couldn't. Besides, Julia, you'll never have any occasion to wear such an expensive dress. Oh, won't I? Well, you know you won't. You haven't planned on going to any of the centennial dances. Why buy a dress just to dream in it? Because I want to. Well, that's the height of selfishness. No, it isn't. You're going to get $15 each. And... Well, where is it? Where's the pin money? I, I, I had it in this pepper jar. Jesse? Where's the box I made for my clock? Jesse, what did you do with the money that was in this pepper jar? Every time I leave something in this house, it disappears. Oh, it does. Well, what about that money, Jesse Rogers? Now, now, Harriet, I use that for butter. With the finishing touches on my clock. But where's the box? I've got to send it off. So that's where the money's gone to. Into that thing again. Harriet, the clock is finished, but I couldn't very well send it to the president of the railroad without a face. Well, how am I going to show my face in last year's dress? You just wait till Mr. Trowbridge sees my clock. Then I'll be able to order you, Julia, and Mother all the dresses... That's all I've heard for the last 15 years. The only thing that clock has ever done for us is eat up all the money that I've managed to save. And all the poor grandfather's insurance. And that bonus money of yours. But, Harriet... It was bad enough all through the Civil War when you couldn't buy any springs and you took them out of our bed and put it into that thing. But when you take the centennial money that I've saved for the girls, then, Jesse Rogers, I must tell you that I hate your clock. Yes, I do. That horrible crackpot invention. Look, Harriet, I can't just be another railroad man. I've got ideas. I've got to do something about it. I've got to get ahead. A man is like a clock. He's only good when he goes forward. Oh, I'm sure it'll run someday, Father. It'll run today. I'll fix it in a jiffy. Why, she didn't even seem to recognize any of her friends. No, thank you. Of course, it's none of my friends. But both parties are the same, Democrat and Republican. I disagree with you. What the Republican Party needs is a new leadership. What the country needs is a new party. And let me tell you, Phelps, if the Democratic Party doesn't get in office next year, this country is going to rack and ruin. And as long as the political machine of both parties are run with so much corruption and honest man, hasn't a chance to take him out of there. No, 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 Now, now don't interrupt the... me. But you don't understand. Grant is basically a military man. Then he should remain one. Why, to put such a man in the White House is like giving away your home to the fireman who put out a fire in it. But, Jesse, Phelps has his point. Naturally, oh. I have my points. The whole country looks up to General Grant. Yes. He's a great soldier. But not a great president. Jesse, come, everyone's dying to sing something. Uh, not right now, Harriet. The boys and I are chatting. Julia! But, Harriet, I was just trying to explain you to the boys. You can explain to them later. Well, at least let me clear up this one point. Now, now, you listen to me. Now, you listen to me, Phelps. All right. Now, you just made the statement that Grant is a great soldier. Well, I concede that point. But as a president, I have my own opinion regarding what... Speaking of work, I'm glad to say I'm happy on the railroad. Maybe I like the kind of pals who like the job they do. Maybe I like to hear them laugh and cuss and kick and stew, but I'm happy on the railroad. The railroad, oh, I'm happy on the railroad as soon as my work is through. Molly.
Sally McCann, she met a man who worked around the roundhouse. Setting her cap, she caught the chap the way you trap a mouse. That is a plight for every night she's left without a spouse. So he works around the roundhouse, the roundhouse, the roundhouse. So he works around the roundhouse. He's never around the roundhouse. Well, maybe I will say yes someday. Maybe I thought we were engaged. Oh, not officially we aren't. Well, does it have to be official when two people love each other? Oh, Ben, how can you be a woman's doctor and, and know so little about women? What do you mean? Well, we don't like to be talked into things. We like for things to just happen to us. Well, it just so happened that I figured as soon as I opened my office, we'd get married. And tomorrow's the day. Yes, I know, Ben, but well, all my friends have been whispering about that. Ben, are you sure it's the right thing for you to do? Why not? I'll be the first obstetrician in Philadelphia, and it, it's bound to be an important thing. With Philadelphia's birth rate, obstetrics will be... Oh, Ben, must you always keep mentioning that embarrassing word? Embarrassing? Well, the very idea is shocking. Oh, Edith, this is 1876. Women are becoming sensible. Look, Edith... No, Ben. Not yet. I don't want to settle down just now. I want to travel and meet interesting people. I want an exciting life, like Aunt Xenia. Like Aunt Xenia? Yes, supposing she had married at my age. Well, your mother did. Oh, but this is 1876, Ben, and women are becoming sensible. All right, then. Oh, no, Ben, you mustn't. Edith. Uh, no, Ben, you mustn't. Good night. Edith. Sweet Just one. Urgent carrier letter. Oh! What was that? Oh, nothing, but I didn't know what it was only... Oh! Urgent carrier letter! Jesse, Jesse, an urgent carrier letter. Well, say in my rails, who's it from? How should I know? Edith, who's it from? Xenia. Mother, it's from Aunt Xenia. Maybe she's ill. Maybe she's dead. Now, Harriet, dead people don't usually write letters. My angel. She's alive. She's well. She's looking forward to... Oh! Oh! She's coming! She's coming to Philadelphia for the centennial! Who? Oh. Aunt Venia! You bring to the press! Mother, father, what happened? Aunt Venia's coming to Philadelphia. Is she pulling in? Oh, let's see. Uh, we'll arrive 2.32 p.m. July 5th. Why, that's less than two months. Oh, just think. I've almost forgotten myself what she looks like. I wonder if she's still as stunning. All she right, enough. Foolish. Let's not allow this to disorganize the household completely. To bed now, children, all of you. Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night children. There'll be sufficient time to discuss this before the invasion commences. Jesse, what a way to speak of darling Xenia. Wait till you meet. You will simply adore her. That, my dear, will require a complete change in my policy regarding foreign relations. Isn't it just too exciting for words? Yes, for mother especially. Goodness, Julia. How can you stand this stuffy little attic room? Well, if it bothers you that much... Oh, darling, let's not quarrel tonight. It's a wonderful room. Everything's wonderful. Two short months and we'll have Aunt Xenia here. I don't suppose she's ever heard herself called Aunt before. Oh, golly, Julia, wouldn't it be thrilling if she decided to take us back to Europe with her? Or we might even end up marrying wealthy dukes or something. The trouble with you is you read too many cheap novels. There you go again, pretending. Pretending what? That men don't interest you. They don't, not men. Someday maybe one of them will. The right one. Oh, now who's talking like a cheap novel? 
Well, at least I'll know the right one when I meet him, which is more than can be said for you. Meaning Ben, I suppose. If you had any sense at all, you wouldn't keep someone like him dangling on your string with the other does. But he loves it. That's about the most callous thing I ever... Oh, why don't you admit what's really galling you? Nothing. No, nothing except having to sit around dreaming up a man for yourself. And why? Because, because the real ones never give you a second look. That's not true. Oh, isn't it? Well, who ever has? Just name one. Go ahead. I don't care to discuss it with you. Good grief, Julia. Don't tell me you still wear these old-fashioned panties. Why, they went out with a covered wagon. Get out of here. July 5th. There, 7-5. 7th month, 5th day. But, Mother, don't you know? Continentals always write the day first. 7-5 means 7th day, 5th month, the 7th of May, and it's tomorrow. Oh, dear. Now, I... Harriet, be composed. If your sister is giddy enough to give us only one day's notice, she can't expect what that we... What do we do? What do we do? We, we, we must think of something. I've got it. We'll just have to give Xenia our bedroom. Xenia staying here? In this house? With us? I'll move in with Susie. You can move in with... Over Bob. my carcass. Edith, you can share the attic bedroom with Julie. I will not. We're not speaking. That's fine. Then everything will be nice and quiet. Now, now, let's start moving things. There's not a moment to lose. Dud, run down and wake up Deborah. Quickly, quickly. Uh, Edith, take everything out of my bureau drawers. Yes, yes ma'am. Julia, you can take all the curtains down. Yes, yes. Susie, go help Edith. My dear woman, it might interest you to know that sister and oh sister, I... Excuse me, Father. Uh, Deborah will be up in a minute, Mother. Thank sister you, Sister and no sister, I haven't the slightest in... I haven't the slightest intention of overcrowding this house. Put your pants on, Jesse. And furthermore...
is, Mother. Where? Where? Right there, it must be. Ezra. Uh, yes, sir. Here's that lady. Get her luggage. Yes, sir. Casey. Yes, sir. Give Ezra a hand. Yes, sir. You too, Slim. I'm Jesse Zenia. Welcome to God's own country. Why, you're much more handsome than I expected, even after Harriet's glowing description of you. I simply must have a kiss from my bewitching brother-in-law. There, I knew you two would adore each other. My own dear Aunt Zinia, to see you at last, I can hardly stand the excitement. Why, you charming, beautiful child. That's Edith. Oh, and this is Julia. I'm very happy to know you, Aunt Zinia. And Susanna. And Dudley. Oh, Harriet, I'm simply livid with envy over your heavenly family. I didn't think it was in you. I expected... Well, I really don't know what I expected. <laughs> Great heavens, my luggage. Now, be composing. I've arranged everything. Leave it all to me. I didn't put it down the back. Ezra, he's mad. Ezra, what's the matter? You told us to get these bags, sir, but he won't let us. Put it down. Now, see here, young man, you've apparently made some error. Monsieur, please do not to interfere. I have enough troubles in this disorganized jungle. Disorganized, sir? I'll have you understand I'm an official of this railroad and... It... Then I suggest you, monsieur, to go to France and learn how railroads should be operated on. What is it? What's happening? C'est Jean Sol des Voleurs. C'est un scandale. But darling, this is Jesse. Jesse Rogers. Didn't I write you about Philippe? My nephew, my late husband's brother's son. He's over here for the government. Something about the uh, French exhibit for your centennial. Oh. I'm glad to know you, Monsieur sir. Monsieur Rogers, it is my pleasure. And I'm sorry that I was so... No, 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 no. It is I who should apologize. Pardon mille fois. Telephone, ami. This is my darling sister I've told you so much about. Monsieur Lascar. Chante. This is my daughter, Edith. Mademoiselle. How do you do? And my daughter, Julia. Welcome to America, Monsieur Lascar. Thank you. And how do you like my family, Jean and Jeanette? Poor oh, babies, all alone in that luggage car without knowing the language. Dad, <laughs> yeah, they're animated sausages. <laughs> oh, Mr. Roger, the super wants to see you. I'll be right over, Ned. Oh, Mr. Sure. Lascar. Oh, oh Monsieur, I'm so terribly sorry. I forgot you had them. <laughs> Excuse me. Mr. Rogers, the latest luggage is ready, sir. Oh, thank you, Ed. Be a lamb and hire us some hackneys. Oh, certainly. Oh, uh, but I've seen you. Philippe couldn't possibly find his way around the station alone. Of course not, darling. You better run along and show him. <laughs> Julia, go after your father and see that he doesn't dilly dally. All right. Poor Jesse. No one ever lifts a hand around here without consulting him. He must be terribly important. Oh, quite. Next to the superintendent, the yard master is king around the station. What do you think we're running here? Junkyard? Sometimes I think. I'm not interested in what you think, Rogers, and neither is anyone else in this company. I've told you time and time again you either stick to your job or get out. What I do when I'm off duty is my business. I told you a year ago not to bring that pile of junk around here. That's not the same clock that was around here a year ago, Snodgrass. This model runs. It's still junk. Sending it to the president of the road. Going right over my head. Why, what will Mr. Crowbridge think of me? A crazy inventor in J.P. Snodgrass department. A lucky thing, his secretary opened your little surprise package and sent it to me. Well, his secretary had no right to open it. I addressed it to Mr. Crowbridge and I marked it personal. As I thought you would. That's why I asked the secretary to be on the lookout for that clock. And you had no right, and I'll see that the president hears about it. You'll complain? Well, there's never been one complaint against this department, not in 25 years. And just because I'm trying to help you. Help me? Trying to keep you out of trouble, out of making yourself ridiculous. And you want to complain. Well... You, uh, just try and complain about this. What's that? It's your new uh, work card, Rogers. I'm putting you on the night shift. Night shift? Yard clerk? Well, you can't demote me. I can't? I'll quit first. After all the years I've been with this railroad. Here's your place. Why, this only pays half my present salary. I can't afford it. You can't afford it? Oh, that reminds me. Uh, I got a letter from the uh, Penn National Bank on 6th Street. It seems... Uh, you want a loan, and they want a reference from your immediate supervisor. Oh. More money for that invention? No. And for what? 
Well, it just so happens that my sister-in-law has arrived for the centennial and... Oh, it takes a little more to manage at home, huh? A lot more. A lot more? Well, you know how it is. Yes, I know how it is, Rogers, but I don't think the bank will. I'll pick up my clock after work. See that you do. Oh, hello, Father. They sent me to hurry along. I'm sorry. A few trifles had to be straightened out. Been waiting long? Just got here. Come. Fifteen years. Then I had breakfast, went out, brushed Mr. Quinby. Yes, but aren't you supposed to be at work? I've arranged to do my work at night for a while. Jesse, is there anything wrong? Wrong? Why nonsense? I simply refuse to be tied down during the day while all of you are having the time of your lives. I want to go to Centennial, too. Besides, it's only polite to Xenia for the short time she'll be with us. All right, everybody, let's get organized. We ought to be getting an early start. Early start? What exactly does she mean by... Huh. I'm afraid Aunt Xenia doesn't know the meaning of the word early. Breakfast in bed, imagine. We probably won't go to the Centennial for hours. We shall see about that. What this house needs is a firm hand on the throttle. Hello, Edith. You ready? Oh, Ben. Oh, Ben, I forgot. I mean... Oh, I'm awfully sorry, Ben, but I, I can't go with you today. You see, Aunt Xenia arrived yesterday and... Well, we're all going to the centennial. Hello, with her. Ben. It's a sort oh, of family you. reunion, you know. Hello, you Ben. You do understand, don't oh, you, Ben? Hello, Rogers. Oh, hello, Rogers. Come on, Edith. Understand, Ben. 
Hello, Doug. Well, that's all right, but I guess you might as well take these with you anyway. Oh, thank you, Ben. Coming that's awfully here? sweet. Yes, Aunt Xenia? Well, I'll drop around when the dust settles. All right, Ben, please do. Goodbye. How I wish I had stayed in France. What seemed to be the difficulty, young man? Everything. Since I arrived in America, everything is a difficulty. Our displays are not finished. We are not ready to open until I do not know how long. The bookkeeper, the bookkeeper is a thief. Our interpreter thinks only of the Algerian girl next door. I am forced to discharge all of them both. Oh, what a shame. Thank you. I cannot understand it, this bookkeeper. In France, he was always so honest. But, Mr. Lascar, you are in America now. You must expect the worst, Julia. I do not expect the worst, Miss Rogers, but that is all I get so far. <laughs> you see what I mean? Pauvre imbécile, faites donc attention à ce que vous faites. Faites donc attention à ce que vous faites. Vous êtes deux grands maladroits. Faith, and if I could understand French, I'd clout him one. Faites donc a... Mercy, what a mess. Senior, it is worse than you know. The Centennial Committee is distressed. The French government is distressed. If only there were some... Senior, do you think Mr. Rogers could employ his influence on my behalf? Oh, I'm afraid that's not possible. What Harry had told me about their state of affairs is sheer fairy tale. It's pathetic the front they're trying to put up. I'd like to give them a check right now and be done with it. I'll have to think of something more subtle, much as subtlety bores me. Oh, Mr. Lascal, you poor chap. And you were so anxious to have everything perfect for your opening. Opening? I doubt that there will be an opening. Nothing is ready, no help. Is there anything I can do to help you? Oh, thank you very much, but I need somebody which is French. You see, all the business here is conducted Mais in Monsieur French. Mais, Mr. Lascal, vous sous-estimez les Américains? Mais vous parlez français. Julia, how bright of you. Oh, it's only high school French. But I'm sure I can get by as interpreter. And I could help you straighten out your oh, books. For then. me, it would be most valuable if it is not too much imposition. Julia working? I, oh, really, why not? It would Harriet. be such fun. Our female forebears plowed fields and chopped wood all of their lives and came through with their morals reasonably intact. Oh, thank you, Father. <laughs> Shouldn't we begin right away? Right away is not soon enough. Gun, come. Off we go. The Rogers Express drops a passenger and races on. All well, aboard. Well, Finny. Uh, goodbye, goodbye. 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 Goodbye, Miss Idiot. Au revoir. Goodbye, children. Bye-bye. This is very kind of you, Miss Julia. What? To give your time so freely, it is most generous. Not at all. Oh, but it is. But it isn't. I didn't want to mention it in front of the others, but I'll expect a salary for my services. Salary? At another time, I might not have considered it, but just now... Oh, please say no more. It is stupid of me not to mention it first. Of course, you shall receive the full salary the position calls for. Oh, thank you. It's very generous of you. Oh, not at all. But it is. Oh, but it isn't. But it... <laughs> to work? To work. Uh, here's another rare old example of early American clock making. Probably one of Eli Terry's. Oh, yes, yeah, so it is. It seems to be all wood. 
Why, of course. You know, the very first to make clocks in America were carpenters. Think of that. Now, you see the... Jesse, you and your clocks. Haven't you bent poor Xenia there enough? Oh, no, please go on, Jesse. I'm fascinated. Your knowledge of clocks absolutely amazes me. Oh, it's more or less of a hobby with me, though I have been doing some serious experimentation with an original idea I had. We've heard of nothing else around the house for years. What was it like? Oh, nothing revolutionary, just a new wrinkle. Being a railroad man, I got to thinking one night about railroad clocks in general. And I said to myself, now look here, Rogers. Why couldn't there be a clock that indicated all the separate time zones in the country so that one could tell at a single glance just what time it was everywhere? Why, Jesse, that's wonderful. <laughs> Did you hear that, Harriet? Evidently, not all people think of a new invention as the brainchild of a crackpot. But I have Has anyone seen it? Anyone important? No, but they will, Xenia. They will. I'm simply famished. We'd better hurry if we want to lunch at the Turkish Bazaar. I believe it closes at two. Well, what time is it now? Thunderation. I left my watch at home. Perhaps we can ask someone. Oh, yes. Dear, I thought we weren't speaking. Oh, that was yesterday. We're speaking now, aren't we? Want some fudge? Thank you, Edith. Let's don't quarrel anymore. Never again. Never again. Julia, what's happened to you? What? You look so pale. Oh, poor darling, you must be working very hard. Oh, no, I enjoy it. He's so much fun to be with. It's really not like working at all. Before I knew it, the day had passed, and I had to say goodbye. Does he expect you tomorrow? Oh, yes. And the day after. And the day after that. But, Julia, what's everybody in Philadelphia going to say? I mean, working with a man. Well, Father doesn't see anything wrong in it. Besides, it's an emergency. If I didn't know you better, I'd say you were falling in love with him. That's not such a bad guess. Oh, how wonderful, Julia. Oh, just think. We've been sisters all these years. And I didn't know until just now that our tastes are exactly alike. Oh, you can't be serious. Oh, but I can. When I want to be. This time, something tells me that I'm very serious. But what about Ben? Well, you're engaged to him. Oh, not officially. Julia, if you'll take some sisterly advice... Well, I won't. Well, you get it anyway. You'd better forget about Philippe, because I want him. Because you want him. Mm -hmm. Better give up right now. Well, I won't. Surely you don't think you can win. Why can't I? Well, because love is a game and you don't know anything about it. You don't know the first thing about trapping a man. I wouldn't want a man if I had to trap him. Oh, poor old-fashioned child. Expect him to get a man the way Mother did. This is 1876 and love is just one little trick after another. And you know them all, don't you? I know enough. Well, I don't intend to get Philippe, not by using tricks and playing games. All right. You do it your way, and I'll do it mine. And we'll see who gets to Paris first. All right, we'll see. Don't forget, I speak his language. Yes, dear, but he understands mine. Bonjour, Edith. Hello. You look so lovely today. Today? Uh, today especially. Oh, well, that's better. Oh, my, what's all this? This will be, whenever we find it together, the biggest little model of Paris. You like it? Like it? Oh, it'll be perfectly enchanting. Incidentally, I understand that one of the nicest things about Paris is the way that young gentlemen take young ladies to lunch at the sidewalk cafe. Hello, Edith. Hello, Julia. Too. Eat and drink and talk. Well, I would love to. But, well, you see... We well, simply must unpack the rest of this model if we ever hope to get it set up on time. Excuse me, please. Of course, Julia. I must do it right away now. Uh, perhaps some other day. Well, business before pleasure, I suppose. That's right. Uh, there must be some other packages in my office. I must get them. If you... Excuse me. Really? 
Really, Julia? It was awfully nice of you to help him out in the emergency, but... Haven't you carried it far enough? Not quite. It isn't very good taste to be so obvious, you know. Yes, I know, but I suppose it's too late for you to change. Oh, Edith. Here you are. Hello, Julia. How are you, Ben? Hello, Ben. Golly, you're about as slippery as an eel. I've been trying to catch hold of you for days. Look, I finally got my office all fixed up and open for business. When are you coming up to see it? Well, I really can't say, Ben. You know, we're so terribly busy. What with Aunt Xenia here and everything. What's wrong, Edith? Sound as if your course is too tight. Oh, must you be so homespun? Philippe. Philippe, I wish you'd change your mind and relax for an hour or so. You shouldn't overwork yourself, and Julia, too. Julia overworked? No, I'm quite sure. What's the matter? Oh, that's Ben. Ben? Mm -hmm. Who is he? I've seen him hanging here before. Why, he's Julia's beau. Didn't she tell you? Oh, no, she... Oh, my, I, I guess I shouldn't have said anything. They've been keeping their engagement a secret, but I thought that... Oh, please, Philippe, you must promise not to let on. She'd be furious with me. Just think, a full-fledged doctor with a shingle hung out and everything. Julia? I have decided to have Edith to lunch after all. If anyone should ask for me, I will return in one hour or two. All right, Philippe. Oh, by the way, I don't believe you've met Ben Phelps. Sulascar. Pleased to meet you. The pleasure is equal. Philippe, I know the most heavenly place where we can get the most wonderful pepper pot. Pepper pot? Yes. Ah. So that's it. No, since Ben, you're well, just... Well, it must be something like that, the way she's been acting lately. Golly, Julia, what on earth's the matter with me, anyway? I'm no shrinking violet. I, I can talk, do things, except when I'm around Edith, and then all of a sudden I turn into a bumbling idiot. Philippe, She'll be down in a minute. Thank you. Oh, Mother, please hurry. Now, can you just hold still and... Well, I don't want to keep him waiting. We want a nice, long, leisurely dinner before the theater. There you are. Run along. Oh, thank you. You are, <laughs> darling. Oh, Junior. Good night, dear. I thought maybe we could... Hello, Ben. Um, she'll be down in just a few minutes. Good night, Ben. Huh? See what I mean? You don't have to say it, and I don't have to say it. I guess our eyes betray it. And yet what can we do? It's only human for anyone to want to be in love. But who wants to be in love in vain? At night you hang around the house and eat your heart out and cry your eyes out. And rack your brain You sit and wonder Why anyone as wonderful as he Should cause you such misery and pain I thought that I would be in heaven But I'm only up a tree Cause it's just my luck to be in love in vain I thought I was the girl He always had in mind 
Which only goes to show that love is blind But he is still a boy I've wanted all along Which only goes to show how love dreams go Good night, Julia. Good night, Ben. Ben! Ben! What is it, Julia? What's the matter with us giving up so easily? Maybe Edith was right after all. Edith? Yes, love is a game, and we ought to play it. A game? Certainly. We don't want to hang around the house eating our hearts out. Times have changed since Father courted Mother. Today you must trap the one you love. Trap? Now, don't ask me any more questions, Ben. Just hurry home, get on your dress suit, and meet me back here in half an hour. We'll see who gets to Paris first. Paris? I cannot believe Julia's engaged with this Ben fellow. But she is, for over a year. But when she look at me, she does not have an engaged look. She has a not engaged look. As a Frenchman, I understand these looks very well. I do not believe she's in love with this Ben. Oh, what an idea. Why have you been in love since they were children? I'm not speaking of puppies' love. Are they in love now? Of course they are. Always I have known when a woman would like me to make love to her. Always? Always. And about Julia? I cannot be wrong. I think you just don't understand American women. Here, when a girl looks at a man, it doesn't mean she's flirting. She's just being friendly. That's the way we were brought up. The way Julia look at me, it is not friendly. But an American look isn't like a French look. When you get to those looks, it is the same everywhere. Oh, not with Julia. I know her. She's very sincere. She loves Ben, and that's all that matters. She could not give me this look and be in love with him. I do not believe. It is. Yes. I think I believe it now. Hold me closer. Huh? Closer. And look at me, Ben. Oh, not like Dad. Look at me like this. As if you were in love with me. Well, Julia, I... Shh, don't say anything now. Why, Edith and Billy? Bonsoir, Julia. Why, I didn't know you were here. Didn't you, darling? Hello, Edith. Monsieur Phelps, won't you join us, please? Come sit down a chair, huh? Like... Oh, no, please. And waiter, a champagne. How dare you wear my dress? Love is one little trick after another, you know. Champagne, how wonderful. I think we should all drink to our own Dr. Phelps. Today should be the beginning of a great career. You know, Ben opened up his new office today, and he's already had a patient. Ah, well, congratulations, Dr. Phelps. To Dr. Phelps. Thank you, everybody. And if you give me your office address, I should be very happy to recommend you to my friends. Oh, thanks. Or if I need you myself. But Philippe, whatever for? Well, it is possible, hmm? But you're not even married. What difference does it make to the doctor if his patients are married or not married? Oh, medically, no difference. But I think, Monsieur Rascal, you'd better recommend me only to married women. Married women? Ben's an obstetrician. Oh. <laughs> Pardon. He's so wonderful. He was the only one in his class who wasn't afraid to specialize in something new. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your kind attention, please? By exclusive arrangement with the Centennial Exposition, we are about to present one of the latest, most magnificent, unparalleled miracles of the modern age. What will next? 
What new magic to equal this? Ladies and gentlemen, on with the magic. <laughs> I sit alone in the golden daylight But all I see is a silver sky For in my fancy I sweep away light And keep my image of the sky about the night here with you. All through the day I wish away the time until the time when I'm here with you. Down falls the sun I run to meet you The evening mist melts away Soon your lips recall the kiss I dreamed of all through the day. Everybody. All through the day, I dream about the night. I dream about the night here in you. I've ever danced in public. How is that possible? We never had a place like this before the centennial. Not where you could dine and dance. Oh, Philippe, isn't it exciting? Yes, exciting. Of course not for you. You've been so many places and danced with so many girls. This can't mean much. Never before have I danced with anyone so graceful. Not even in Paris? Not even anywhere. No one so charming, so enchanting. I don't believe you, Philippe. Oh, but Julia, it's true. You are remarkable. Every day at work, you are so efficient, so business-like. Here, you are the young lady. Perfect for Paris. Perfect just as well for London. Oh, Philippe, I'm so happy. Yes, I know. What do you mean bringing Julia here, of all places? Well, why not? How dare you go out with her? We're supposed to be engaged. Are we? And why'd you go out with the French boy? Because I wanted to. Well, I wanted to go out with Julia. Oh, you did? Yes. At least she looks at me once in a while. She's very sweet, intelligent. Anything else? Good companion. Anything else? Very beautiful. Well, why don't you go after her? Maybe I should. Well, cut in right now if you dare. Well, maybe I will. Uh, may I? If you don't mind. All right, not at all, not at all. Oh, but Julia, it is time to go to the theater. Uh, you two are going with us, of course, huh? Oh, no, I'm afraid I can't go. 
Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. It would have been so pleasant to have you along. But Ben can go to the theater with you. Oh, no, Julia, not if you don't. Nonsense. It's Ben's day to celebrate. I wouldn't think of spoiling his evening. But, Julia, what you have to do, really, is it so important? Yes, it's very important. I really must go. Then Ben will go with us, of course. Oh, thank you, Billy. Oh, Julia, I wouldn't dream of having you go home alone. Oh, please don't worry about me. I've gone home alone before. Good night, now. And please, take good care of Ben. Oh, don't swear, Julia. Maybe I'd better... No, 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 Doctor. It would be our pleasure, of course. But, 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 there are no buts. My carriage is in the outside, and I can easily exchange my tickets for three, so we will sit side to side. You must spend the whole evening with us, my dear Doctor, every single minute. Is it all right with you, Edith? Oh, of course it's all right. Julia, what in blazes you doing here this time of night? Oh, please don't be cross. I just couldn't sleep and... Well, I thought you might like some hot coffee. Here. Hold this a minute. I wish there were more dependable railroad men. The one who did this simple job made so many errors, I'm forced to spend a few nights disentangling. I had a feeling you knew. How about some hot coffee? Your mother used to bring me things this way when we were first married. It's been a long time. Father, let's tell her. About your job, I know. No, no. But every penny comes I just I said now. no. Well, maybe soon, when I sell my clock idea. You honestly think you can? Certainly, and Aunt Xenia thinks so too. And she's a woman of remarkable intelligence and foresight. Merely a question of getting an interview with the president of the railroad. He'll know a good thing when he sees it. But you've been trying for over a year. Well, he's an unusually busy man. Of course. Maybe this will help a little, just to tide us over. Where did you get it? I didn't tell you. I thought you might consider it undignified, but I'm getting paid for the work I'm doing. Working for money? Oh, Philippe, I mean, Monsieur Rascal insisted. I'm afraid you got a very wrong impression of him at first. He's really so... Well, rather nice. I see. Oh, no, you're wrong. I'm sure he doesn't think of me as anything more than an employee. And a friend. Yeah, I think you'd better return this to Philip. It doesn't seem quite proper that he consider you an employee at all. Oh, continue helping him if you want to, but don't accept the salary. That way it'll be, well, much more friendly. But we really need it. I know, and don't think I'm not proud of you for trying. But don't worry, child. Your father's quite capable of pulling us out of this temporary predicament. There's plenty of steam in the old engine yet. <laughs> now you run along home. Get your sleep. Girls are much prettier when they're well rested, you know. Good night. Good luck. Oh, father. Thanks for a most delightful evening. Tomorrow? Oh, I'm afraid not. The day after? Opera? Races? Well, let's sleep on it, shall we? Is that you, Xenia? Oh, darling. Good night. Good night. Did I waken you? No, I wasn't asleep. Darling, it was really awfully sweet of you to wait up for me. We've hardly had a chance to be alone since you came. Remember all the happy hours we used to spend together? Mm-hmm. Sitting up half the night, rambling on about men. It looks as though you've done plenty of rambling since then. <laughs> oh, well, some people collect stamps. Unbutton me, dear, will you? Venia, hmm? there's something in particular I wanted to talk about. What? Jesse. Oh, now, there's a man, if you want an expert's opinion. He simply fascinates me. He's so different, so, so lusty, so... So impressionable. Impressionable? 
Have I really impressed him in some way? Well, you've certainly gotten him into a that old clock business. Messing up the whole house with his tinkering, running all over town when he should be catching up on his sleep. We're all becoming nervous wrecks. And what will it all add up to? Nothing. He'll only be disappointed the way he was last time. Why, Harriet, I simply wouldn't have believed it of you. Believed what? Why don't you admit what's really bothering you? You're not worried about that clock. You're just a trifle jealous, aren't you, darling? Venia, have you lost your mind? Oh, it's very flattering, of course. But I assure you, Angel, you haven't the slightest cause for anxiety. Really, Xenia, how can you say such a thing? Maybe I'm somewhat to blame myself. You know, I often flirt without meaning to, without even knowing it. But if it'll make you feel any better, I'll have a talk with Jesse in the morning. And if he's got any wrong notions... I'll... Jesse? Notions? Why, don't you think it's possible? <laughs> you don't know Jesse. Do you? After 20 years? Especially after 20 years. You know, darling, you've always been awfully naive about men. Oh, I've never known men, just Jesse. And I'm quite, quite sure that he could never be smitten with anyone else, particularly you. Particularly me? Oh, nothing personal. It's just that men like Jesse usually like meat and potatoes. They don't care for crepe Suzette. They do the way I make them. Oh, you mustn't misunderstand, Zenia. I don't deny for a moment that you have your charms. And you've learned to use them very artfully. Thank you. I can see how they'd work on your dukes and counts and different. Well, I mean, you've never known anyone as simple and straightforward as Jesse. The circles you've always moved in have been... Good morning. Julia, what has happened to you? I almost want to recognize you. Oh, heavens. Can a girl put on a different dress now and then? No, no, it is not the dress. It is more. You look as if you were... What? You must be very happy. I hope you always will be. Any more answers to the invitations? Oh, I know. Mr. So-and-so regrets he cannot attend the opening of the French exhibit because of... So-and-so and so-and-so. Perhaps you should forego our plan for a formal opening altogether. The president has left Philadelphia. No one seems very interested. Philip. Philip, I wanted to talk to you. It's about the salary I've been getting. I thought so. Hmm? You put this building in the wrong place. Oh, but the map shows... The map is wrong. It belongs right here on the Rue de la Paix. I do not need maps. I know Paris by my heart. Every street, every building, every stone. I like people who can fall in love with places. Look, this is where I live in Paris. It should be here in front of Chestnut Street. Oh. Oh, it is not important, the trifle. Trifle? Ah, trifle. <laughs> <laughs> right here next door is the most charming little restaurant, Le Rons. They serve only cheese and wine, but such cheese, such wine. Mm. While you eat, Madame Laurent argues with you about politics. <laughs> and Monsieur Laurent plays opera on his flute. Oh. Here by the river lives a man who creates magic with paint. Have you heard of him over here, Renoir? Auguste Renoir? I believe I've heard the name. At night, you find me here in the cafe on the Champs-Élysées. Or maybe at the Comédie Française watching Sarah Bernard. Or maybe at the Variété, promenading in the gallery watching the girls do the cancan. <laughs> Philippe, Philippe, look around. Does this place remind you of France? Oh, yes. The France you were just talking about? Well, no, but... No, of course not. It's 
stodgy and cold and affected. It has about as much charm as a tourist guidebook. It's such a wrong picture, as wrong as your idea of America when you first came. Yes, yes, I now, see. Now, this could be an exhibit of the spirit of France, rather than its anatomy. The music and dancing. People laughing. The cheese and the wine. Monsieur Laurent's flute. It would be wonderful. I have another idea. What? For opening, we will make a costume ball. Oh, yes. With everyone coming as his favorite French character. Perfect. Who could stay away? The place. We shall redecorate it to make it look exactly like... Oh, but will there be time enough? There will be if we start right now. Today, we must do it, Philippe. Yes, yes, we will find a way. Oh, Julia, this could not be done without you here. I am very grateful to you. You have gone far beyond the mere salary. You have been to me a fine friend. I meant to tell you, I'm not going to accept a salary anymore. Julia, we're not listening of such a thing. Then I'm afraid I'll have to leave. But Julia, you must not. I, I... You are remarkable. Come, let's get to work. Hmm. To work. Now, is there anything else we can do to help you, Mrs. Lestat? No, no, thank you. Is everything done? Go home and go in bed. Yes, sir. Good night to you, sir. Good luck. Thank you. Good night. Good night, sir. Thank you, Miss. Good night. Good night. Well, we've done pretty well for only a week. Don't you think so, Philippe? Pretty well. Huh. It is miraculous. Pretty well, you Americans. <laughs> you are so cold. Are we? Just this last one, and we are through. Awaken up, Julia. You are home. What is it? Nothing. Just my dream. A funny one? You ought to know. You were in it. Really, I, I feel so guiltful about how you have overwhelmed. You've done too much, made yourself too tired. Oh, not at all. It was fun and exciting. And I loved every minute of it. I can hardly believe it. It, it, it seemed impossible. But tomorrow night, actually, we are ready to be opened. Isn't it wonderful? All those people who sent their regrets clamoring now for invitation. Well, I will see you tomorrow night, eh? Of course. I do not know how to thank you for everything. Don't you? No. Funny. I know how to thank you for everything. Good night. Wait. Philippe, I don't understand. For a Frenchman, you're the primest person I've ever seen. I am no one of the kind. But everywhere, yes, in France even, it is not considered correct to toy with someone's feelings when you are in love with someone else. Thank you for being so blunt. I promise I won't step out of place again. Ever. your dresses once. Now you can wear one of mine. Here, you can be the hostess at the French ball. But aren't you going? He'd rather have you. He told me as much. You've won. Oh, please, please go and leave me alone. Mr. and Mrs. Carl Andrews. Justice and Mrs. Horace Burton. 
Admiral and Mrs. George Cloud. Ladies and gentlemen, may I ask for your very kind attention for a little French dance. Mesdames et messieurs, en place pour le carré. I declare the way he's stirring that flaming brew. With that fanatical look in his eye, he looks like one of the witches from Macbeth. <laughs> Come now, Xenia, what is this mysterious concoction? Wait and see. It's something fit for a king, I assure you, Your Majesty. <laughs> Fine king I'd make. Really, Jesse, I've never seen anyone more regal. Why, you'll make the president of your railroad look like a track walker. How do you know what he looks like? I was only out for dinner with him the other evening. I hope Madame would like the crepe Suzette. Crepe Suzette? Yes. Crepe Suzette. Go on, Jesse, try it. One little taste won't hurt you. Delicious. Here you are, and have a delightful evening. This way. Philippe. Has she arrived yet? Who? Julia. No, I, I don't think so. What could be keeping her? Oh, probably Ben. He hates parties, you know, and of course she won't go anywhere without him. I see. Come on, Jesse, let's dance. Jesse doesn't dance. Jess. I've never yet seen a male who could dance without looking like a palpitating nincompoop. What utter nonsense. You're going right out on that floor now and dance, and I'm going to teach you. Xenia. Xenia. No, no, not now. Yes, yes, Jesse. Some other time. No, I, I want you to try it now. Now, look. Put your arm around me like that. Put it right here. That's it. Now, this arm out this way, and off we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Keep your head up. You're a wonderful dancer, Jesse. Oh, well, that's using you. Oh, be careful. You better not let Harriet hear that. She's awfully jealous, you know. Well, maybe we better go inside. Oh, there's Mr. Crowbridge. We've been waiting for you. Madame Lascar, you're looking very lovely this evening. Thank you. I'd like you to know Mr. Jesse Rogers. Mr. Rogers? He's the inventor of that marvelous clock I was telling you about. Oh, indeed. Well, this is a pleasure, Mr. Rogers. I've been hearing a very great deal about you. Thank you. Oh, may I present Mr. Graham? How do you do? Won't you join us at our table, Mr. Rogers? Well, uh, I... We'd be delighted in just a few moments. We'll look forward to it. Did he say to join him? 
yes. Well, I can't do that. He's the president of the railroad. And you're Jesse Rogers, the brilliant inventor. Now, remember, darling, you're doing him a favor to let him hear about your clock. And don't forget all the other offers you have. What offers? Millions of offers. Oh. Only you must make Mr. Crowbridge realize that he must better them all. And he probably will tonight. You mean he's here to buy my clock? Among other things. Suppose he finds out I'm working for him. Act as though he should be working for you. Walk over to the table casually in a minute or two. I'll have him all prepared for you. Xenia, you're wonderful doing all this for me. Why, I could kiss you. Really? Yeah, that's just a figure of speech. Tell me, Jesse, haven't you ever kissed another woman since you've been married? Oh, no. Not in 20 years. No, it never came to my mind. But it's on your mind now. Oh, we mustn't keep Mr. Trowbridge waiting. I'll go get Harriet. Harriet? On a matter of business? My dear Jesse, men of affairs never bring their wives. Harriet, whom do you think I just met? Mr. Trowbridge. Well, you've been gone long enough. He's the president of the road. He's invited me over to his table. Just think he wants to hear all about my clock. Xenia arranged it. Xenia? Is my cravat straight? It's more important for your thinking to be straight than your cravat. Jesse, it's not honest. It's not like you puffing yourself out like a powder pigeon. That's just what I've been up to now, a pigeon. But from now on, people are going to know who Jesse Rogers is. Well, I hope so, dear. No, my dear. You better wait here for me. Wait here? Alone? My dear Harriet, men of affairs never bring their wives. Who told you that? Xenia? Jesse, I'm not going to sit by and let Xenia turn our lives upside down and make a fool of you. I won't stand for it. I'm going home and you can go to Xenia. You know, my friends, as impressive as the centennial may be, it still does not solve our fundamental economic problem. Then what's to be done, Rogers? Well, Trowbridge, you're a railroad executive. You find yourself stalled just at a time when you want to move forward to greater expansion, greater... <laughs> you better not get me started on that subject. I can go on all night. Oh, well, Jesse has some perfectly entrancing ideas and inventions, too. Rogers, I'd certainly appreciate it if you could find time to drop over for a chat someday. I think it could be arranged. I like your approach to the matter. I wish a few of my thick-headed assistants had the same sort oh, of... Oh, well, pardon me, Mr. Trowbridge. Oh, hello there, Snodgrass. Just talking about you, among others. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, I'm sorry to bother you here, sir, but it's a matter concerning the Emperor of Brazil's private train. If I might oh. have a moment. Oh, very well. Oh, by the way, I'd like you to meet someone, Mr. Jesse Rogers. This is Snodgrass, my local superintendent, Mr. Rogers. I, I believe we've met. Uh, Rogers is a prominent inventor. Seems to have some very interesting ideas concerning railroads. Inventor? I uh, beg your pardon, sir. But this man is working for you. Working for me? He's one of our yard clerks on the night shift. But there must be some mistake. No. There's no mistake. Thank you, Xenia, for trying. Good night, Mr. Trowbridge. I'm due at work in an hour. The trains will not wait for me. Well, I don't understand. I must ask you for an explanation. Shall we go, my dear? Yes, of course. Oh, here you are, Philippe. What do you mean by running away and leaving everybody? Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I only wished for some night air. Is that all? No. I also wished for Julia. Oh, forget about Julia. The ball is a huge success, and... Well, here we are. But the one person responsible of it all is not here. Why did she not come, or at least send words? I do not understand. You do not understand anything about American women. You're always talking about some other girl when you're with me. Would you do that in France? Why, in France, I was in love with every girl. <laughs> but here I'm in love with only one girl. Ever since I put eyes on Julia, I cannot look at anyone else. How dare you say that to me? But Edith, it is only the truth. Oh, it is. I suppose you haven't seen what a fool I've made of myself over you, throwing myself at you when Ben really loves me. Ben? If I were a man, I'd blacken your eye. Maybe I'll get Ben to do it. 
Ben is, is also in love with you, too? Ben is in love with only me. But he's engaged. He's engaged to me. Edith, I love you. talk to you. Go away. Leave me alone. But I've got so much to explain. I want to tell you what happened at... Oh, please let me in. I can't say these things with a door between us. Harriet! What's the matter, Father? Go back to sleep, son. You, Mr. Rogers, I must see Julia. I must talk with her. I have a good mind to blacken your eye. You also? What is wrong? Talk to her, indeed. Now that she's gone, you want to talk to her. Go on. You again, remove yourself from my sight. But I want to have a word with you. The only word I can give you, sir, is not fit for the delicate atmosphere of a saloon. Well, what have I done so wrong? You left France. One of the... Rye. Triper. What? Triple. Mr. Rogers. Go away, go away. <laughs> is new and my mood is chipper i'm the lucky fellow who found the crystal slipper 
world is full of melody. Magic things are happening. Never thought that I would be meeting royalty. Talk of sugar plum. Talk of honeydew. Brother, here she comes. Cinderella soon. Patches on her gown. Ashes on her shoe. Bell of shanty town. Cinderella soon. Twinkle toes, pixie nose. That's the size of her. Passers by. And oh my, miracles occur. And in shanty town, right before your eyes, shacks they tumble down, palaces they rise. Got to be a prince, happy ending too. If I can convince Cinder. But Mr. Rogers, guess que je vais to do now. I can't understand a word you're saying. You must be drunk. What shall I to do? I can only repeat, sir. Go back where you came from and take Xenia with you. I do not want Xenia. Nor I. I want Julia. Julia who? Julia, your, your daughter. How do you know she wants you? It's true. She could not want me now. I have been such a stupid ass. Stupid ass! You're the only one. Now that I have found her, I have lost her. I guess I was all wrong about you, Philip, my boy. I guess you're just a man, like all other stupid asses. Thank you. Don't mention it. I will mention it if you will mention it. Mention what? Anything hmm? else? No. Uh, what time is it? It's after 11. Whew. Late for work. Goodbye. Adieu. Huh? Goodbye. Adieu. Goodbye. Goodbye. Where are we going? Shh. I came this way so as they won't know I'm late. Yes, but I... Leave it to me, Philip, my boy. It's about time I took the horns by the bull. Kelly! Oh, Kelly! Hello, Jesse. <laughs> well, but ain't his majesty himself. I want you to take Philip for a ride up a ways. He's a friend of mine. Enchanté. 
let him off at Hamilton Junction. And when you get there, ask for Jeb, the station master. He'll tell you where to find Judith. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, She's staying with her grandmother. I love grandmother. What have you got to say for yourself? So, you old humbug. To top off everything else, you're drunk on duty. Drunk? Now see here, sir. Who put that rail in? Jesse Rogers, you're fired. This morning and I'm as gay as a lark. <laughs> Breezes sing to me, sing of spring to me. Flowers bow and whisper. Howdy. Deborah, has he come in yet? Where's Susie and Doug? Went out looking for him. The idea. Acting as if I had done him a wrong. Should have been home an hour ago. Well, if he thinks he's going to frighten me into forgiving him, he's... I was up with the lark this morning, but now I'm up in the sky. Here you are with me on a star, with me high above, with my beloved. Why you mention it, put some French in it. Vive l'amour. I'm glad that you found me. Are you sure? Keep that arm around me. I think you're wonderful. We'll be up with the lark each morning and though the sky may be dark. Your heart and my heart will sing along with the lark. Good morning, Deborah. Uh, good morning, Deborah. Don't good morning me, young lady. Staying out all night. And with this, this Frenchman. Really, Deborah, I just want to have you saying such things about my fiancé. Fiancé? My own little darling. A few years ago, I was putting diapers on you. And now here you are, coming home with your intended. Oh, no, no, no. Am I a reason for tears? It just breaks my heart. You two sweethearts having to bring your happiness into such an unhappy home. What's happened? How do you do? How do you do? My name is Edith Rogers. I'd like to see Dr. Phelps. Of course. Will you sit down, please? No, thank Edith you. Edith Rogers. Your address? Pardon me, but is all this necessary? I haven't much time. Oh, really? You should have come sooner. If you'll just give Dr. Phelps my name, I'm quite sure he'll see me. Very well, Mrs. Rogers. Miss Rogers. Miss Rogers? Next, please. Edith. Come in, come in. Well, then I... I guess you...
guess you're sort of surprised to see me here. Surprised is rather a mild word. Well, it wasn't very easy to swallow my pride, you know. Well, I can imagine. I'm certainly glad you came right straight to me. Oh, thank you, Ben. Well, that dog, I'd like to take a horse whip. Oh, Ben, please don't take it that way. It was actually my fault. Well, what's the difference now? It's all over. He won't marry you? I wouldn't even if he asked me. But you must. Why must I if I don't love him? Well, th those are pr pretty advanced ideas, aren't they? Why, Ben, whatever's gotten into you? I've never heard you sound so straight-laced. Look, I, I didn't come here to force myself on you, if that's what you're thinking. Oh, forgive me, dear. I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable, but... Well, it's pretty hard for me to be entirely clinical in your case. I should think it would be. It's just that... Well, I mean... Have you ever faced the possibility that he may insist on marrying you? Oh, I'm quite sure he won't. And anyway, he couldn't if you'd marry me first. Huh? I guess I had no right to suggest that to you, Ben. I, I know I've treated you very shabbily, but somehow I thought that... Well, maybe... I'm sorry. Wait! Edith. Edith, we'll go away someplace, away from all the prying eyes and the wagging tongues, and, and then we'll be able to forget this ever happened. Ben! Do you actually think that, that I'm going to... I promise you, darling, it'll never matter to me, believe me. There, there, darling. Everything will be all right. Nobody will ever be the wiser. Oh, no. Nobody except you someday. Mm -hmm. Oh, you Good day. Good day. Julia, you should have told me before. You should have. Oh, I know it, Mother, but he made me promise not Poor to. Poor dear Jesse. Oh, it must have been hurt and humiliated by being demoted. And there was I, blithely spending money as if we were rolling in it, and badgering him about all sorts of nonsense. Last night, I wouldn't even talk to him. Dud. Mr. Kelly says he hasn't seen him since last night. He says he was worried because Pop looked like he didn't feel very well. Oh! Please, Mother, darling. Philip may find out something. You want me to run down to the police station? Maybe he's in jail. Be quiet. I don't know what could have happened to him. He... Susie. Philip? I could not find him anywhere. I thought maybe he had gone back to the saloon, but... The idea. Jesse's never set foot in the saloon. Oh, yes, of course. Philip, we can Harriet. be. Any word, yes? What have you done with my Jesse? Don't be ridiculous. You know perfectly well I've done nothing with Jesse, except try to help him. Heaven help anyone that gets your help. Oh, I know. Everything didn't turn out exactly the way I'd hoped. I wonder. Harriet, how can you? Still, I rather suspected you'd take it like this. That's the reason I've arranged to leave this afternoon. That is, if Jesse gets back all right. Oh, must you? Well, I have stayed longer than I'd planned. No, I mean, must you wait for Jesse? I'll be on the 4.30 train. Train? Of course. What is it, Mother? That's where he was last seen at the railroad station. I'll hitch up Mr. Quimby and run down there. I'll get to the bottom of this thing if I have to tear the place apart board by board. Why for if you can't share the bad things with her as well as the good? Why, if I'd known you'd been demoted... Oh, it's worse than that, Harriet. I may as well tell you now that I've got no job at all. I've been fired. Well, Jesse, I'd say that was the railroad's loss. Men like you don't come by the bush, you know. They'll find that out soon enough. It doesn't matter? You're not worried? In a way, I'm glad. There's that picnic we've been promising the children all summer. And the garden's been needing your hand, and 
As a matter of fact, I think you'd better plan on taking at least a week off before you think of accepting any new jobs. Oh, Harry. I've been such a now, fool. Now, now, none of that. People who never make mistakes finally sprout wings and fly away. And I want you here. Don't worry. I'll never sprout wings. <laughs> Neither will I. You see, I made a mistake too. I should have remembered to tell you that I... What? That I think you're wonderful. Goodbye, Dudley. Goodbye, Dudley. And Susie. Goodbye, Edith. Goodbye, 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 my darlings. I'm off at last. That's the way it's been all my life. I come, I go. Well, goodbye, Xenia. Oh, uh, Xenia, I would like to say, or rather, we would like to say, that we regret... I know. You don't want me to be too unhappy over all that's happened. But don't worry. I'm a cat, and no matter how they're thrown, cats always manage to land on their feet. Believe me, I've got a lot more out of this little visit than you think. So have we, dear. So have we. Uh, Rogers. Uh, Rogers, my friend. May I talk to you? That is, if I'm not interrupting. Uh huh? I am afraid I acted much too hastily last night. Mr. Trowbridge and I have just had a little talk. The company is buying your clock, and we're going to pay you to perfect it. Put you in charge of all improvements. Let me be the first to congratulate you. What are you getting at, Snodgrass? Don't you Nothing. see, I'm darling? Never... I told you, men like you don't come by the bushel. They found out soon enough how much they need you. Yes, in a way. Experience That'll railroad be, man. Snodgrass. You can see I'm busy at the moment. We can discuss this matter later. Certainly. Any time. Any time. <laughs> now, isn't that simply amazing? I always thought that men needed a little pull to get ahead. I told you, you don't know men like Jesse. All aboard! Oh, goodbye,